Hello everyone, I am Tacit and welcome to the Gems of War stream and also happy Lunar New Year's as well. Uh, we end up finally getting that new um, calendar thing too for the uh, daily adventure board. Uh, this all the way over to left. They didn't do anything too special for it. However, 100 gems is 100 gems, so still pretty nice. Like I was expecting it to be like something more unique, but that's actually the legendary gem drop, I believe. I don't think it's under Mythic. I believe it's the legendary one, but regardless, it's uh, 100 gems, which is tied at the highest that any of these tasks ever give. Speaking of that, I also got lucky and got the uh, top one for 100 gems. That one's random per person, but these three are consistent for everyone. So gems, 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 and gems. That's a lot of gems. Let's see, given that I got 100 off of that, how many did I get total? That's 200, that's uh, 210, and that's two, um, uh, that's 235. So I got 235 gems off of that today, nice. Though of course 80 less if you didn't end up getting lucky, which is like 5% chance up there. But still, uh, pretty nice for the holidays if nothing else. Uh, other than that, uh, most of the stream, we're going to be doing a combination of two things. Getting Arc uh, Magnus leveled a little bit up, and um, trying to figure out some uh, good teams uh, from uh, last year, which are still relevant for this year. But I wanted to go make a video soon going over the best, probably top 10 teams of last year that are still pretty much relevant now. So figured I uh, end up going over that soon. I uh, was going to think about covering it today, might get it out tomorrow. But regardless, want to get it up very, very soon and figure this stream we could uh, mess around with composing some of those teams. Some of those we don't really need to look that far because we already have them set. However, not all of them we have set. Um, but it's mostly going to be things that were best for certain game modes. I uh, probably won't go into Guild War too heavily, but it will focus more so on troops that have been added in the last uh, year or so that became viable. I'd probably also include Leprechaun and Iron Gut in that list. Uh, mostly because Iron Gut um, was supposed to come out last year, but technically came out the year prior. And Leprechaun, uh, it did come out very, very late in 2018. However, it didn't really start to get utilized until 2019 anyway, so I kind of consider that one 2019 as well. And Iron Gut was originally supposed to come in in January 2019, but ended up coming in 2018 because they had a, a copyright issue with something on the uh, other Mythic that was supposed to come out. So it got pushed a month earlier than it was supposed to. But anyways, hello everyone, hello uh, Zidikis, hello Zach Kid, uh, hello Jefferson, hello sir, hello David, and I've been doing pretty good, uh, just finished eating a salad before I started. Uh, hello Isabel, hello Elite Gaming, hello Sir Wolf, uh, hello Zex, and hello everyone else, welcome, welcome. So is every single team I have down here worth uh, overriding? Let's see, Bounty Hunter I don't need, because uh, we already finished everything with Bounty Hunter. And I already showed it for the video, so that we don't need. We already finished out the uh, other event, so we don't need that. That is probably worth mentioning because two things happened. Zugoff ended up getting his thing removed and then that. So this is probably worth mentioning as one of the better teams as well. Just because it's the uh, instant kill one. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to put them in a certain order. But um, I'll just name them for now for what they are. Uh, instant kill. So we'll put this as one of them for sure. Maybe we'll put them in actual order. However, it's kind of weird to put them in order because some of them you wouldn't really have a specific order for. For example, something like um, like this team or the Scorpius team. Uh, they're only good in ever so situational situations. But uh, let's see. Let me make sure I get all these two. They're worth mentioning since Explorer is now a gigantic part of the uh, game now, of course, uh, with everything. Get all the ones we already have and then start building everything else. Like, for exa example, Divinish Bala Quillen combo. Actually, did Quillen come out last year? I actually cannot remember. Was Quillen 2019? I feel like Quillen was 2019. I actually do not remember the date. I need to go double check that. There is a list of when everything got released. I am pretty sure Quillen was 2019. I am almost certain on that. Uh, this one renamed to... Um, uh, explore 12. Well, what's everything else we need for this? Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to skip on the normal explore team. Just because, um, I don't know. I guess it's worth mentioning. If we don't have enough teams, I guess it's just worth mentioning as one. I use that a lot, that's for sure. Uh, let's see. Manage that. Paste team. Uh, what's this? Quick kill. Uh, low quick kill. It's even cheap to build, too, which is nice about it. And I can mention the Rowan version of it as well. I mean, the um, 
the uh, what's it called the um, Urskea Shield version as well. Actually, I might as well just even make it into the Urskea Shield version. Oh, if I could spell words correctly. If I could, please. <laughs> there we go. Uh, let's see. There we go. Fixed. And just do that. Probably change it to a different hero class because that hero class didn't exist at the time. Um, was there something that was really good for it? Was Corsair okay? Or do you just go Titan? I guess it could work either way. I think it would make too big a difference. But anyways, uh, so we have those three. Let me make sure I actually put this down so we know which ones are and are not actually for the list. Uh, what happened to Zugoff? Uh, Zugoff this year ended up getting his, um, his, um, one-time only cast removed. So in the past, uh, the way that Zugoff worked is you can only cast him once and then you can never cast him again for the duration of the battle. However, several months ago, they changed them so that you are allowed to cast them multiple times per battle, which uh, drastically changes viability. It made him from a relatively average mythic to uh, one of the better ones in the game. Still not the absolute best mythic in the game, uh, especially relative to how much he actually costs. But... Um, he has been viable ever since they got rid of the delay, or the, the fact that you can only ever cast them once. So that was a change that ended up happening to him. And as far as everything else, I don't really need to mention. Uh, Vespera is not really worth mentioning because none of the really meta teams came out of it. Oh no, I, what was the yellow Vespera? Was yellow Vespera viable? I don't even think I changed it over top my yellow guild war. No, I didn't. I don't think it's viable enough to really mention. Quillen I should. Let me double check. Was Quillen last year... I feel like the answer to that is like a guarantee yes, but I do want to double check. Uh, where's the easiest place to check it? Probably Gems of War database, I think. Uh, let's see. Let's go into the calendar because they have a time thing. It's not fully accurate, but it's accurate enough that uh should give us an idea. Uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for timeline. So let's go to timeline. Let's type in Quillen. Quillen came out in February. T yep, Quillen was last year. It was February uh, 10th. So it was pretty early last year, which is why I wasn't sure if it was last year or not. But yes, Quillen did become a thing as of last year. So the Quillen meta is worth mentioning for it. I'm not sure what version of it. I've never definitively figured out which Quillen version is absolute best. I don't know. What, ver what order do you guys prefer for Quillen? For doing Divine Shpala Quillen team? Which one have you found to be like the hardest to fight? I honestly do not know which order is best. I've tried it in, like, every single possible combination. Uh, where's the normal Quillen team? Uh, the current one that I use for Defend, I actually put in first slot, uh, Rope Dart. I think quite a few other ones do Divine Ishbala first. There's so many different ways that you can order it, but this general premise of this team still stands. But yeah, this became really meta, and has been since. It's more of a Defend team than an offensive team. However, you could use it for both. It's a little bit slow offensively, which is why it's generally not used for that. Whoops, what am I doing? Uh, let's see. Also, I need to rename it as well to um, Divine Quillen. Oh, I always thought Quillen had a U in it. Is it Quillen? Do I always keep pronouncing that wrong? I always thought the thing had a U. <laughs> Quillen. Quillen? 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 I have no clue, but that's that. Uh, so we'll put that there for now. I might do it a different order. I don't know. I prefer this order the most from what I've seen. But, um, there's a lot of different orders from it. Let's see. I'm pretty sure we could find, like, three different ones just by constantly repicking. If we see Divine Shpala or Quillen, it's probably a Divine Shpala Quillen team. Uh, that's a random Zugoff team. Uh, let's see. This one with a Raph. Oh, Raph Zugoff. There, that should be Quillen. Yeah, this is the exact order. Oh, actually, not the exact order I did. Slightly different. They switch the um, a couple things around, but the general premise stands. There's so many different orders that people use them. I'm not sure if anyone has actually like gotten data on which one is the better order. Nope, that's not it. Oh yeah, web spinner. Web spinner got buffed earlier this year. I have to mention a web spinner team. Oh yeah, that's a good thing now. That's a good thing to transition into. What's the best web spinner team in the game? I know of several. I'm trying to think of the most intimidating. I don't think it's that one. How do you get Rope Dart? It's an old event weapon. You get Rope Dart from whenever it's a Pride Lands event. The next Pride Land event is probably not for a couple months. But uh, it is only obtainable by two means. 
Uh, one is buy it with uh, diamonds and stuff whenever it's a Pride Lands event, which only happens once every several months. And by several months, I mean like six or seven months. And uh, the only other way is if you randomly find it in a $5 offer, um, you can end up getting it that way. Because sometimes it tries selling you a weapon you don't own for $5. Uh, however, if you want to get it for free, the only way is to wait till next Pride Lands event. And we have no clue when that will be. But eventually, soon TM. Or maybe not soon TM. I think we just have it one somewhat recently, didn't we? This could be another four or five months. Can you raid a team for you? Sure. What team are you? Uh, do you have? But yeah, let's go get a um, web spinner team. I don't think I have one saved, oddly enough. Uh, nope. That is just... What even is that team for? Uh, let's see. Let's click on the same one twice. Don't need that. Don't need that. Now is this the borderline? That wasn't anything use useful. Oh, yeah. Uh, I wonder if it's worth mentioning Orb Weaver. Though nothing or an Orb Weaver team really came out last year. I mean, this year. Wait, when did Life and Death come into the game? Was that actually last year? Um, No, it, could, it shouldn't have been. Silver Necropolis. Where are you? Silver Necropolis came... Wait, it did? Oh. Life and Death came out this year. Or last year, 2019. I did not realize that. Actually came out even later than Quillen. Gosh, it's it's been less than a year since that. Felt like it's been in the game forever. <laughs> Gosh. Um, yeah, it, it, Life and Death hasn't been out for a single year yet. It came out uh, mid-April last year. Wow. I guess when something is meta and you have to play it a billion times, it seems like it's been out forever. But it's less than a year, somehow. Actually, it's closer to uh, nine months only. But yeah, I guess we'll mention the Orb Weaver thing. It's weaker than it, uh, it was in the past, but uh, the only problem with that is that's another one that has a lot of variants. And of course, we'll only mention one variant. What one do I use for Guild Wars? I use a somewhat weird one where I can, like counter them out. We should probably do a more traditional one uh, for showing it. Like maybe a Web Spinner lead one. Actually, what is the standard version of it? <laughs> Not even sure if there really is a standard version of it other than going like all elves and kind of going down that way. Um, what? Oh, there it is. Obviously, it's the one that's Orb Weaver. Uh, manage. Because when we would use Orb Weaver for really anything else. This did get nerfed last year, but it's still so meta that it's it's worth mentioning. Because people still use it like crazy. And Life and Death, Death came out last year. So in that regard, it's uh, worth mentioning. Uh, let's see. Life and Death. One of the most annoying, if not the most annoying weapon in the game. It's not It's not the strongest weapon in the game. It's just the most annoying weapon in the game. There's a difference. Okay, uh, this team minus a mirror is what the standard is. There's a couple different ways we could go about this. But yeah, I think Web Spinner might just be the way to go. Because Arachnid Weaver replaces it anyways. Doesn't matter too much because you assume first slot will die. When you're using this team. And banner, um... Actually, I might want to change in that situation. What are the minus red banners? Is there anything good under minus red? Uh, I saw a plus two purple there. A plus two purple, plus one green. A plus two purple, plus one yellow. Um, one of them. What do we have now? Plus two purple, plus one brown. So that's a spam life and death more. But for the minus one blue when we're using web spinner, probably isn't worth it. Is there another color we're not using, or is it just red? It should only be red. Because we have Life and Death, Arachnid Weaver. Uh, that's one, two, four, five. Yeah, we're covering five colors. It was missing red. But that thing creates green. You don't do any mana, right? No. And then we also end up getting the, uh, what's it called? The Web Spinner after. Or not the Web Spinner, the Orb Weaver, I mean. So we could either put yellow into that so it hits that more often. Or we could do the green so Web Spinner could hopefully get something out of it. Though is it more beneficial if it doesn't even cast? I think we actually do go for the yellow then. The so Arachnid Weaver can spam a bit more. <clears throat> also because it's stealthy and impervious. And with the double stealthy we make it so our center is uh, not going to die. While we keep our top and bottom uh, so it does die. Essentially. Um, yeah, so I think we'll roll with that then, for showing it that way. 
a little bit more of a normal method for it rather than specifically centered towards a guild war die. Uh, let's see. Oh, can you copy it? Yeah, let me go get that team real quick. Uh, let's see. Where is the almighty YouTube? Almighty YouTube. Where's my stream? Uh, your channel. Click on my live stream. Leave a like. Pause the ad. Uh, there we go. Let's see if we can hit 10 likes. We're up to, uh, 6 right now. And 7. And now 8. Wow, that went up quick. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, let me go get this team. Why is it not letting me copy? There it is. Copy, copy. Okay, what's this team? I hope that's not what I wanted. Uh, let me just pick over one. Manage team. Pa <coughs> paste. Um... Yeah, it should work pretty well. What are you trying to use this for? Green Guild War Offensive, I assume? Based on it being so pure green. Um, are you using this for Defend? What are you using it for, specifically? Yeah, Life and Death came out with Silver Necropolis, which was last April. But yeah, what are you using this team for? It is decent. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about Yasmin Chosen in that team, though. Yasmin Chosen has fallen off pretty hard. Especially since uh, Wild Queen might just be the better option. In almost every situation, you run Wild Queen rather than um, Yasmin's Chosen. Wild Queen would synergize more with your skulls, but I guess Yasmin's Chosen synergizes more with the fact that you're creating so much green. And then you deny out with the uh, Doomed Blade thing. It would definitely work, but what are you using this for? Green Guild War? Uh, let's see, Green Offensive. Yeah, that should be able to work then for Green Offensive. I don't see why not. Do I use a different variant of it? I'm not even sure if I use that for Green Day. The um, the Truffle method. What do I use for Green Option these days? Yeah, I use the Wild Queen method. I still use the Doomed Glaive into that same colored Mythic, but I use it more so Doomed. Gl um, I use it more so Wild Queen centered. But it's still the same general premise. Yours just tries getting more greens onto the board, whereas this tries doing more skull value. They're both the same premise. But yeah, it would definitely end up working. Which does remind me, I need to mention at least one doomed weapon team when we mention these teams. So we got Instant Kill with the Iron Guts, which came into the game, as well as Zoo Goth that got buffed. We have the Best Explorer, which really only has Leprechaun as new content. Uh, those other two came in way prior. Um, the Low Quick Kill. This one got Leprechaun, or Scare Shield was already in the game. Um, actually, that does remind me. What was the latest hero class that was added last year? The, uh, or the earliest hero class that was added last year? The earliest hero class was... Uh, let's see. War Priest. Hold up. Does that mean Sentinel was this year? No, Sentinel was last year. No, wait, wait, wait wrong one. Um, no, Sentinel was this year. No, that, man, that's Treasure Vault. No. That should still be Sentinel Hero class, right? What is this? Um. Oh yeah, Sentinel did come out this year. Wow. Came out last February. Interesting. Okay, so another thing. Yeah, Urskia Shield actually came out this year. Or uh, 2019. I forgot about that. Nice. Well, even more of a reason to show that team. Uh, okay, so we have that. So we have uh, that showing Hiking Iron Gut uh, and Zugoff being buffed. Uh, that is for mostly Leprechaun and the fact that it's super meta for Explore 12. That was Erskia Shield and... Actually, wasn't Mirage Queen added too? When was Sunken Fleet added? Uh, yeah, Sunken Fleet was last year as well. So that one's for Mirage Queen and um, Erskia Shield and Leprechaun. Um, this was for Quillen. Rope Dart, I'm pretty sure, was not this year. Or 2019, I mean. Uh, Rope Dart. Why does it not even come up? That's weird. It's not even on this list. I'm pretty sure it wasn't last year, though. Um, but Quillen was. I believe Moon Rabbit was as well, too. Uh, Moon Rabbit was Warren's? When was Warren's released? No, Warren's was actually... Oh, almost! It came out the 27th of 2018. It was like a few days before 2019. Um, let's see. Life and Death came out this year, or 2019. Uh, Web Spinner Buff came out 2019. And 
So I believe it's Sing. I believe King of Learn didn't. Uh, no, he was 2019 as well. He was March. Interesting. Okay. So we have one, two, three, four, five. I still don't have a Doom Weapon team, which we'll definitely need to mention. I also don't have a normal Web Spinner team. I have one with Web Spinner, but not a more standard one. Um, just for fun, I really want to show the one that has the two Skull Spam thing with it. Yeah, I don't think this is the best variant. But gosh, this is one of the funnest variants. <laughs> Uh, and I believe both of these other two troops came out this year, too. Or 2019. Whenever I say this year, I mean 2019. Uh, let's see. Where's the other one? I know you're in here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure both of those were last year. Or this year. I don't know. Now, <laughs> I don't know which way to say it. But, um, 2019. Let's see. I spelled his name wrong. Uh, a pop. What came out in March. And when did the Fist of Zorn come out? And Zorn came out on March. They both came out in March, really? I didn't even realize they were that close to each other. They both the two came out in March. And then we just have one other option, which I believe is just Leprechaun, or do we use Hero? Actually, what did I normally use as the other option in this? So we have Skull Spam, we have Skull Spam. Oh yeah, it was Stargazer. Oh yeah, it was like the high risk, high reward thing. Or you could use Doomed Weapon in second slot. It was like either or kind of thing. And I still feel like going to Doomed Weapon might be the better route then. For it. I don't know, the, having the attack buff was nice. But having the Doomed Weapon was a good backup for in case your thing died. So for that reason, we'll probably just do a Doomed Weapon. So what Doomed Weapon actually does fit here? Um, You deny green, you deny yellow... What color are you missing? Brown? Brown converts away green. But we already have something that converts away green. Is that the only color we're missing? Yes. Hmm. The green would deny brown. But ideally we'd want one that web spinner is not blocking. Uh, let's see. Oh, what color would we go for that then? That got nerfed into the ground. Gosh. Remember when that used to be good? <laughs> Dragon's Eye. Why oh, am I doing Mountain? Uh, I want Brown, not Mountain. Though my instincts is just to go to that one if I need Brown. Uh, Doomed Club. You convert away green, right? That's unfortunate. Could always get rid of Apothecus for something. What's the one that denies out blue? Wouldn't it be the green one? Uh, let's see. Doom. Which one denies out blue? It would be the red one. Gosh, there's so much red on this team, though. That's triple red at that point if we did it that way. Could also just use Stargazer. I don't know. Stargazer is the method I used to use for this. It does this. Um, let's see. Stargazer. I'll put that in there. Uh, we set our banner to a minus brown, whatever the most relevant one is. Which is probably a plus two you uh, plus two uh, red plus one yellow, because we're not actually casting web spinner. Hero class doesn't matter since we're not using hero right now. Let's go fight the. Uh, this was what I was talking about with the doomed blade thing too. In this case, he's using a. Um, the, basically, the whole premise of this team is use web spinner that just got destroyed, uh, followed by a bunch of things that support it with empower. That's basically the whole premise of this team. And he's running a similar variant, just different. Once it gets going, it pretty much just auto wins. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't have a way to get going right here. Oh, oops, and we're frozen on that. That's even worse. Rip. We're going to die to freeze so hard right now. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's just convert to yellow. Just hoping we'd hit a little bit more skull than that. Hey, this is why it's good to run a Doom weapon in second slot, so you have a backup plan in case this does happen like this. Because right now we don't really have a follow-up, but luckily we're not uh, frozen anymore, so we can now go to that. Get a nice hit down. Throw the other one over. Uh, you convert away green, which is not what we want right now. I guess we could start Geezer buff first slot, if we don't have any other options. Uh, let's see, we'll grab that again. Uh, you should be able to go do yellow, get attack buff on the first. 
You'll be able to go do green. Is that enough damage? No. Is that enough damage? Hopefully. Let's see, move that, move that, move that. That should be enough. There we go. Ideally, that's not the way it goes. I don't know, maybe we do show it with the Doomed variant. The Doom weapon variant. If nothing else, we need to show Doom weapon team anyways. And that could be the Doom weapon team. Because obviously we're not covering a team for every single Doom weapon. <laughs> that would be a video in itself. Uh, let's see, I'll move that over. If you get untangled, that'd be great. I guess that's why he was running the cleanse variant of it. I don't know, we could give it a shot. I never actually tried the exact variant we were just up against. For our sanity, I'm going to retreat because it could be too annoying otherwise. We can go try it. I don't think I've ever actually tried it specifically like that. Maybe it is really good and I'm just not even aware of it. It's the same premise. Uh, let's see, we need that. We need bunny. Not sure about bunny though. But it works for cool and team. It could work for this. Uh, ups, why am I typing bunny? This is what I nickname it. It's not actually called bunny. It's called, um, I should forget its name. <laughs> it's always called bunny. Uh, moon rabbit. And, uh, also over here, I actually need you. And we can go all in on our banner. We have an option of minus brown and minus red. Uh, whichever one gives us plus two yellow is the way we'd go. Um, so let's see. Too bad you can't search for plus two. Let's see, minus and minus, any color. Okay, I'm looking for a plus two yellow here. Do any of you have it? Yes. Um, however, plus one blue on top of it's not really that good. Though we need the plus two yellow so much that's probably worth it. Wait, what do you convert? Uh, blue to yellow. Oh, well then. Um, oh, that's every option we have. That's the only plus two to yellow we have. So I guess we kind of have to go for it. Because there's no way we're running without plus two yellow for this team. Oh, however, um, it is this team. So we can go and change our class. Uh, I feel like I'd want to use one that can actually function up front. Or we could just go priest and go all in yellow. <laughs> so that we have every single bit of yellow. My only concern with this is how are we going to get skulls other than converting? Because the only skull option we have is off of... Um, it's off of... Um, what's it called? The uh, Doomed Blade. Or Doomed Axe, I mean. We don't have any other option other than that. So if we don't have Doomed Axe alignment, we can't really take skulls. Which is problematic. I do like that that carries a cleanse. I just don't feel like we're, we have all this mana accumulation, yet we aren't going to be able to use it until we get alignment. Well, at least we got alignment. And he's dead. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of it. I'd rather just go with the variant I was running and just run a red blade there or something. And just run... Um, Run it with the two empowers. Oh, no, I prefer it this way. The only big issue with this team is if you get entangled, you lost. <laughs> but as long as you don't get entangled. Uh, let's see. We'll put this here. Where's the other one? Put that there. Oops, I just did the same one twice. Where's Fizz's Orn? And then we go for um, the uh, Skull Spam off of a Doom weapon. So check our weapons. Brown we don't want to do. Because it denies the color we already have going. I believe it was the red one, right? Because that denies out blue. Which will work fine. Okay. And I always find a plus two red, plus one something. And we can do that with a minus brown. Perfect. Plus two red, plus one yellow. And that is our game plan then. And we run that with not priest. Uh, we could run that with... Um, Actually, going the, the Pride Lands one might not be horrible. Do you have Burn? Does this weapon have Burn on cast? Has Firestorm? No, unfortunately, does not Burn. Which is relevant because the Hero class is triple the Burning. I don't know. We might still run Sunspear on this. Did Sunspear come out last year? I believe the answer to that is yes. Uh, but yeah, freeze a random enemy at start. Immune to freeze, immune to burning, uh, because it gets alpha trait. 
Entangle on start. Some extra life. Some submerge. Some extra red mana. And triple damage to burning enemies. Which it doesn't actually have any way to burn on this team though. Unfortunately. But perpetual red storm should help it. <laughs> oh, excuse me. And then just deny on blue. I don't know. The only problem with a red storm though compared to a skull storm. Is we're denying. Um, we're denying the board quite heavily. Of colors that we might actually need. Also, hello! Uh, they even say hello. Uh, hello! Um, uh, let's see. Wait, where are the other two? Hello, Gasman. Hello, Foro. Hello, uh, Neil. Hello, Christopher. Did I miss any other hellos? Uh, let's see. Let me read back a little bit. Graveseer instead of Amira is a classic. In what team? Oh, the one that we were just doing with it? Yeah, I guess for the mana rush on it. That was from a little while back. That was for the uh, Orb Weaver team. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Any replacement for Arachnean Weaver in that team? Oh, I don't think it really does. Um, Because the whole premise of the team is that they both have stealthy. So that neither of them dies. Which is a pretty big aspect of the team. For Scorpius or Yali, explore 12. Uh, what, replacement for Yali in that? Or Yali can be replaced with Web Spinner or Shadow Dragon in that team. Uh, let's see. What's the worst troop in Gems of War, in your opinion? Gargantar. It has way too high of a mana cost to really do something. It's Gargantar, Fist of Zorn. Um, that one thing that Deathmark's an ally. That one Mummified King. Some of the worst. Hello, Humberto. Welcome. Some people always say Peasant, but Peasant actually has some useful viability, particularly in Arena. I have no problem, Jamie. Glad I could help. Okay, let's go see how this team works now. So right off the bat, we don't have anything we could do, so let's take mana. Follow-up is nothing, so let's take mana again. Uh, we got a skull for triple damage. Yeah, I guess I'll grab it. Take all the green here and then go into another skull. Because unfortunately, that's not a line to be used for anything. Uh, we have purple aligned, but that doesn't actually be useful for anything, so we'll do that. Uh, let's see. Bit of a slow start. This converts away blue, which we should be able to use next turn based on that board. If he doesn't ruin it. Or silence us. Or endlessly loop. <laughs> uh, let's see. So I can't use blue anymore. You convert in green, and I can't use green. However, I can use green into blue most likely, so I'm actually going to do this. And then we do this. And then his entire team dies, pretty much. Uh, let's see. Wish we could use you right now. Let's go drop that down. He'll poke us. We'll poke him back. Or at least ideally we'll be able to poke him back. Uh, we can, but it's risky. Because then he gets to hit us back again. I guess we still go for it. Why not? Nice. Okay. And then he dies off the yellow one. Up, oh, which we still can't use. Fail. Uh, well then. I guess we do this. Ideally, that would have been for alignment. The fact that that other one silence is really annoying. Uh, I think we just give it to him and then we can do him blade kill him. So we'll do that. Let him have it. And then he should die off this blade. And dead. A little bit of a slower battle that time. It's one of the other reasons why I like using the Stargazer variant sometimes. It's a little bit weird because it doesn't run hero or anything. And it only runs one damage source that you have in first slot that can easily die. However, when it works, it works very, very well. Uh, so we'll go for that for triple. Fortunately, it's not enough to kill. Oh yeah, why do I not have it set to attack? When you run this team, you should be running it with 12 attack. This is really important to set that to. Some teams can function without it. This is not one of them. Uh, let's see. I don't think it's worth it yet, so let's take a move. Oh, I didn't mean to give me a like that, though. So we'll take some reds to get it going. And then we should be fine to go. Especially if he just hands us that. Though, that's not even an alignment. However, explode so much board, I think we still go for it. And he's dead. 
Yeah, this variant should always, or this team should always run uh, 12 attack because Web Spinner needs it very badly. It gets 36 additional damage per skull from having that 12 attack, which is obviously pretty large. How useful is Scurvy Sea Dog? About as useful as any of the other empowers. The side effect's only gold, so it doesn't do too much, but it's, uh, it's okay. Okay, I'm frozen on the other color, so I'm going to do that first. Um, we don't have alignment. But I believe I'm just going to go for this. And we don't have anything we do with green, so let's take Skull Poke. Take a red into Sky Skull. Uh, let's we'll take that Skull over there, because I don't believe we have it on green right now. At least not for extra turn. And now we do, and now he's dead. Came with triple damage that one, yet still going to die easily. Uh, do we have alignment on any of these? Yes, we have it for yellow. And then we have it for blue. And it's still our turn. That still works pretty nice. There's a lot of variants to it. Not sure which one I like the most. Yeah, when did Raph come out? Oh, uh, Raph, 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 Raph. Raph. Raph came out in August of 2018, so he's not relevant to mention. Oh, yeah, duh. He came out with Center Mirage, duh. Yeah, that was definitely two years ago. So we won't mention him. So how many are we up to now? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we still need to figure out four more uh, decent teams for that then. Because I'd probably want to show ten of them. What else was really meta at the moment? Or in really recent times? That I haven't mentioned. Trying to find a theme that isn't already done. Also, Yagwe Queen of Tanya I don't want to mention. Just because Yagwe Queen of Tanya has been meta since the day it's existed. And I'm pretty sure neither of those components came out last year. Not a single aspect of it was specifically from last year. Actually, when was Tapon released? I don't think Tapon was. Um, Tapon was added in... Uh, 2018, that's what I thought. Yeah, it wasn't last year. Uh, is there any way to look up what event shops offer and their gem costs? Uh, no. There's no way to do so in advance. Trying to figure out how many gems you need to save up. Uh, what event are you looking to save up for? I might know offhand. But no, there's no way within the game itself to check ahead of time. You will know generally what the rewards will be. For example, next week is uh, Tower of Doom. So we already know what the Doom weapon is going to be. And we already know a few other details. Um, actually, pretty much all the details. I just forget what they are off the top of my head. But for example, the Doom weapon coming out next week. Uh, because the, the Doom, every Doom event costs the same amount every time. Same as every other raid event and every evasion event and every bounty hunter event. Their cost has never changed. And their rewards cycle through pretty predictable things that we can see through spoiler threads. Uh, let's see, return to main page. But the weapon we're getting next week is um, the following. Does this bring it up? No. That's just an image of it. But what it does is um, it's a green weapon, so green doom, that deals magic plus 10 scatter damage, plus 4 per tempering level, and then create a mix of green uh, gems and skulls for every green enemy, and then gives, uh, and that's at a 6 times boost ratio, and then it gives uh, 3 uh, magic to all allies, uh, if the enemy has a Doom, uh, give five or more. And, uh, yeah, we've already had a couple variants of that weapon. It's not good, unfortunately. As far as its traits, it gets Vital, Tangling, uh, Lightning, Leaf, and Doomed Nature. Uh, vital is plus four life. Uh, tangling is Entangle First Enemy, of course. Uh, lightning is five Scatter Damage. Uh, the Leaf is Leaf Storm. And the Doomed Nature is drained to mana from all green enemies. And that's the weapon we're getting. But if, as far as the exact gem breakdown, I actually forgot off the top of my head. If I go look at one of the old Doom events, 
uh, from one of our videos. We could probably figure that out pretty quickly. I'm not sure where data is kept, actually. I'm pretty sure somewhere someone has made a list of what all the costs are and what the general basic layout of the rewards are. Because the layout never really changes. So, for example, the layout for Bounty Hunter, we already know, is uh, the following. We know that this will cost... Um, oh, what was it? Um... We know that this will cost 30 gems, 60 gems, 120 gems. Wait, I think feel like I'm doing this wrong. I know this is 300. This is 200. So that's 500. Since that is 500. Yeah, then this has to be 210, which should be 30, 60, 120. But yeah, we'll know this will be 30, this will be 60, this will be 120, this will be 200, this will be 300. And with that info, um, we would always know every single event week uh, when this ends up coming out. Like, we'll get these rewards, these rewards, these rewards. It's the same every single time. And how much they will end up costing, too. And how far we need to go to go get all the rewards that we want. And every single one kind of has that format. I am not sure where that full layout is for every single week, though. That data is out there somewhere, though. Uh, what is the best way to farm traits since the changes in Explore and Challenges? Uh, the best way to farm traits. Uh, the best way to farm traits since the changes in exploring challenges. What do you mean by changes in exploring challenges? What changes happened? You would just go and spam explore with uh, quick kill, which is um, the Rowan team that we we're mentioning. It's uh, this team. You go to any explore you want, as long as there's not a bunch of revives or spell reduction. You put it on difficulty two or three. And uh, then you just kill it with this. You use any hero class with any hero weapon as long as it doesn't block Rowane. Followed by Rowane, Mirage Queen, and Leprechaun. You cast a Leprechaun. You cast Rowane. And it should be dead. Of course, we'd get, not get full mana. Normally it does. And he's just one shot dead. And rinse and repeat. Yeah, this ends up farming up trait stones at the quickest rate in the game. And it gives higher rarity trait stones. And you can cycle through wins about every 15 to 20 seconds per cycle. Yeah, it goes really quick. This is also the best way for getting arcanes. The only slight issue with it is since it does give slightly higher rarity trait stones, it might leave you a little bit short on minor trait stones. However, you can just buy them with gold keys. You can also pay glory to spam them up. If the color is available on the glory pack thing. You can buy them for basically... Um, four of them for either 300 glory or 400 glory. Uh, Marcelo, what did you ask? Uh, you might be wrong, but you think there is a new legendary room on Delves? Uh, right now, you're farming City of Thieves and you're facing a team with Mimic, Drown Sailor, Mirage Queen, and Skyla. I'm pretty sure that has existed before. I think. Is it a treasure? What's the what's the loot for killing it? What do you obtain from winning that room? Yeah, that's basically in a meta for explore right now. And the higher level meta is um uh there's two other ones. But the uh, one of them is you can do 12 in order to go and quick kill with something like this. And the other meta is on the Explore 5. Um, Phoenicia can actually one-shot the team. For two trophies. I'm probably not going to be mentioning that in the best teams video. Just because most people don't bother trophy farming. And also, I don't think anything on the team actually came out this year. Or last year, I mean. But yeah, this is all you have to do to farm the higher level of Explore. Something along the lines of this. Main premise is using Scorpius with poison to kill. And just rinse and repeat. And you can win in about 30 seconds on average. Sometimes quicker if lucky. It gives Bone Storm when an enemy dies. Oh yeah, that might be a new one. 
I don't recall that. But maybe I just never noticed it on it. Because I don't farm City of Thieves that often. Also, Mythic Boss Battles have a guaranteed chance for Arcane. And they still give you another Arcane, or they still give you another Tree Stone drop as well. But they have guaranteed Arcane on them. But anyways, let me go figure out the other few teams after we finish out this battle. Hopefully we'll just randomly pull a Nisha as well. You know you want to, game. We need those Nishas. Come on, let's randomly see a triple Nisha drop. Two Cedrics, of course. Okay, where were we? How many teams are we at? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah, we still need four. Um. Oh, I never mentioned Truffle. <laughs> Hello. Actually, I might as well just move this team. How can I not show Truffle? Is it a Noma Vault Weekend? Uh, no, it's not a uh, Vault Weekend yet. Next weekend is Vault Weekend. This is not a Vault Weekend. It kind of felt like it with how many we were getting there. But no, it's not Vault Weekend. Vault Weekend is next week. It starts next Friday. I believe it's, what, the last day of the month, right? Uh, yeah, the 31st to the 3rd. Or more like the 31st to the end of the 2nd. But, um, yeah, it's not until next Friday. That's today. So we do have the special adventure board thing, which is a hundred gems, which I'll be doing later tonight. Yeah, anyways, um, yeah, how could I not mention Truffle? Truffle came out uh, midway through last year, and it has infinite loop. They brought back infinite loop with it. There's a couple different variants. Um, it's actually a Titan variant. Let me go do the Warden variant. Because Warden's used for pretty much nothing, so might as well at least show it for that. Uh, okay. What else? So many Titans. Uh, so we still need more then. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I'm trying to like look at some of these to remember what else might have been meta. Key team's not worth mentioning. I still use it some, but nothing in it came out last year. It all came out the year prior. I don't think any of the Guardians are worth mentioning. This team, I don't feel like it's worth mentioning just because Mirage Queen's the only thing that's new in it. However, we could. It is technically the best trophy farming method in the game. However, that's not really too relevant. Uh, the fact that it can do that. I know some people would still like to know, I guess. I don't feel like I'll really be mentioning Guild War teams with this. Guild War is kind of its own thing. I'm trying to think, what else was really big that came out last year? Great King. I feel like I never really use it. It's such a utility option. What else was really big? I'm trying to think. I know there's like something I'm probably forgetting that was huge last year. Let's see. Let's go to the timetable. Let's go all the way to early last year where I'm probably forgetting about. Uh, Phoenicia. Phoenicia was last year? Oh, yeah, duh. She was supposed to come in at the end of last year. I don't know. I guess I'll mention that then because theoretically she was. Okay, fine. We'll add Phoenicia. Let me make a copy of the team, though. Because most of these I'm going to overwrite again. Uh, let's see. Manage team, paste team. And call it... Um, uh, two trophy, five explore. I'm sure that works. Uh, because she actually did come out, technically. Okay, so Phoenicia... Yeah, she came out same time as Soldier of Wrath. Go figure. Festival Cow is actually this year? Interesting. Now, it's not good. <laughs> I didn't realize it was this year, though. Oh, yeah, a lot of factions came out this year, too. Tanya came out this year. 
uh, Sentinel Hero class came out this year. Tina 9000 came out this year. I'm not sure if it's really worth mentioning any Tina 9000 teams. Plague Lord came out this year. Wait, Plague Lord? Who's Plague Lord? Oh, Plague Lord weapon. I was going to say. Well, that's not. It doesn't sound like a mythic. They're talking about the uh, Plague Lord Hero class. I was going to say, that definitely didn't seem like a mythic. What was the mythic for that month then? Oh, we didn't get a myth mythic that month because of how it fell. Wait, we didn't? That's weird. Tina 9000 came out at the end of the month rather than at the beginning of the other month. I guess because of how it fell. I never even realized that. Um, Queen of Sin, Vashtangon, Dervish Hero Class, Obsidious. Obsidious is a great utility. I can't really think of anything too meta with it, though. Champion of Guard became pretty useless. Shade of Zorn is like one of the worst mythics in the game. Corsair was a decent hero class. A little bit hard to really use plus three properly in any context. Yeah, quite a few data points on here is a little bit weird with how they have it. Grey King came out this year, of course. Uh, let's see. King Bloodwood was pretty useless. And then, of course, we had Shabanu Vespera. Which I'm not sure if it's really worth mentioning a team for her. Oh, we well, still need to figure out two more teams regardless, though. Yeah, Obsidious can be used for two things, primarily. It's anti-lust and it's anti-life and death. I don't know, we could end up making Obsidious team. What is the most meta Obsidious team these days? It's not a troop I normally use that often. I've used it occasionally for Guild Wars and just to plop into a team as a utility purpose. Uh, I'm not sure what the absolute best is for it these days, though. With what currently exists. Because it's only used to counter teams. It's not used just to fight any team. Hello, Drock Savage. Welcome. Also, I might want to mention Great King. Well, I personally don't like using it. It does have its purposes. As a pretty viable option. Oh, is it spelled the A version of Grey? Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, let's see. Destroy all gems of a chosen color. All, I'm not even sure what the proper way to type Grey is for my region. <laughs> because I always see it it's written in so many different ways. I still spell color without a U and stuff like that. Because it looks so wrong without it. But Grey and Grey with A and E. I have no clue which one's actually the right one for my region. What's an infinite team in your team list? Oh, it's Truffle Team. It's just standard Truffle Team. You can also run it with Mirage Queen. But it's just Truffle. Truffles came out midway through last year. Also, the Doom Weapon came out last year. These are all teams for 2019. Like, teams that became possible as of 2019. Like, since it's Lunar New Year's, I wanted to cover that very soon. Ideally today. But I feel like I need a nap soon. <laughs> because I really did not sleep well last night. Uh, let's see. Oh, I still need two teams regardless. What's the Great King side effect again? Silence and freeze. Uh, let's see. And of course he has mana drain attached to it. Which is one of his whole premises. He's so true damage into all that. Oh, uh, let's see. I wonder if there's a way to actually combine the two. Just for fun. Just so we can do it in one team and then save the other team for something else. I'm pretty sure we could get away with that. A team that uses both um, both Great King and Obsidious. Okay, what do we need to tweak? Um, what are we missing? Just yellow? Is that already correct? <laughs> we can just go with this. Uh, I'm not sure this would be the absolute best, though. Actually, I don't want that. I want, um, 
I want a plus two brown into a plus one to one of them. Is that even possible with this banner? I want a plus two brown into plus one into her. That is not possible. However, we can plus two blue into plus one to brown. Which I guess works, because otherwise we have to go plus one, plus one. So might as well go plus two, plus one. Might as well throw in some Dispel. Um, what, to get rid of Bless? Does, um, does what's-his-name have Dispel? We're Sentinel. Does Sentinel have Dispel? Uh, Sentinel, Sentinel, Sentinel. Isn't the answer yes? Yes. Yeah, might as well. Why not? Uh, should be fine. Oh, what weapon are we using? Oh, this Mountain Crusher doesn't matter if we switch the other thing. Yeah, Sentinel has Banish. And then we just run it with 20% mana start into, uh, into, I guess, attack? That or just durability. I don't know. It really depends which way you want to go, but definitely 20% for sure. 20% into, yeah, sure, just, just make it attack, I guess. Would that work? It feels like that would work. Where'd I put the team? Rename this to Disable Spam. <laughs> there we go, there's an Obsidious team. He's running a curse stun. That's the other variant of it too, of course, with Obsidious. Get curse stun to disable everything. What's the best troops to metal first? We did a video on that a little while back. The top four troops to metal first for every rarity. Let's see if I can go find that real quick. One second. Should only take me a moment to find. Uh, let's see. Click YouTube. Gems of War. If I could type, Gems of War top four would probably bring it up. I don't even need to type in the rest. Uh, or I do. Never mind. Or let's see, top four things to trade first. Let me type in elite levels. I should bring it up. Yep, there it is, elite level guide. Oh, I said best four, not top four, that's why. It didn't come up. But uh, this video. But uh, there it goes, there's the video for uh, best things to metal. Per rarity, top four per rarity. Just right off the bat, we'll go for Apothecary, of course. Then use the Apothecary. Then uh, keep getting mana. The only problem with having Obsidious there is he does initially block the mana a little bit. So what's the most populated color here that we might need to disable? Looks like blue is a good option. So let's get rid of blue. Okay, that does a bunch of true damage to them and kills them out. Get a good apothecary again. Grab a um it's the most best one to go for now. Uh well they all use a different color, so I guess we'll disable the one that actually has mana. So let's go for purple here. Fortunately it barely lives. So I think we go for obsidious now. And now we can go for blue again to get apothecary back up. An Apothecary, an Obsidious. I'm trying to see if we have any way to extra turn it. I feel like the answer is yes. Uh, that's not guaranteed, but I'll go for it. And, or was it guarantee? Maybe I didn't see it. Now he's dead. Oh, oh you're not. Never mind. Okay, now he's dead. I'm not sure if that's the best variant, but that's a pretty funny variant. If I want to show both of them, I think this is the best way we're going to get away with it. Then we just need to find one more team then, at that point. Still not a big fan of either two, personally, though. But they are viable. 
Okay, I think we want to disable uh, brown. Oh, problem with that. We should probably not aim at brown when we're using Apothecary. And Mountain Crusher. Oh well. <laughs> we're still going to do it. It's because of how much value we get out of it. And he's dead. Should be enough to kill her off of that. Can you please get your second hit? You're allowed to. And it was kill with that then. Yeah, that works. Hello, Gustavo. Welcome. Yeah, I'll show that variant of it. Might as well. Just so I can show both of them in the same team. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now we just need one more team. That's composed of things from um, from last year that are extremely meta. I'm trying to think of some other ones. A is the American version. E is the England version. I'm not even sure which one I normally do. Suggestion. Sure, let's see what that team is real quick. Uh, let's see. Oops, that's not what I wanted. What I wanted is this. It's annoying that chat moves when uh, anything t gets typed when I'm trying to, like, copy something. So if any comment is made, <laughs> it moves the location of the thing I'm trying to highlight. Uh, let's see. We didn't need this, right? Nope, it's just key team. Uh, hello. Did I not paste it correctly or copy it correctly? Are you sure your team is correct? Oh no, I forgot the bracket. Whoops. My bad. That will help. Forgot the last bracket of the uh, code you just sent. There we go. Oh yeah, the um, this is the infinite loop version. This is the infinite loop unique version of um, of Truffle Team. I personally don't use this. And I said I'd kind of avoid doing Guild War Defense, and this is a Guild War Defense. However, so is Orb Weaver. And if nothing else, this does use four things from this year. Actually, every single thing in this team is from this year. So I guess I'll mention it. I'll mention around the time of Truffle. I definitely prefer Truffle. But um, this does have a pretty consistent infinite loop once it gets going. Problem is, once it gets going... Uh, let's see. We'll grab that for now. Yeah, it should be everything we need to get it rolling. It also gets a bunch of silence. Oh, you have immune to silence, don't you? <laughs> I silenced the only thing on his entire team that has immune. Good job. Good job. There we go. Yeah, it's an infinite loop truffle team. Composed of everything that came out this year for it. Yeah, it works. I guess we'll mention it as the other one. I want to bring it down to where truffle is. Uh, where to go? Oh, wrong screen. Uh, let's see. Ticker tributes. And put that over in our infinite loop section. Oh, again, doesn't fit. I want to fit again somehow. Oh, well, we'll just name a goblin's back. <laughs> Uh, or how about this goblin remeta? There we go. That'll fit. 
Actually, I think that's it fits exactly, doesn't it? Oh. <laughs> there we go. And that is actually four times goblin, because thief counts as a uh, goblin. There we go. Infinite loop next to other infinite loop. One pure goblin, the other one not pure goblin. Okay, and if I think of something else, I might change out some of these. But uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if I have to go over a video, that'll be ten of them for it then. Nice. Not sure if I'll get that recorded today, but uh, well, if we do, we have at least ten teams. Some of them I might tweak a few of them though. One or two. Not the goblin one. More so like the ones we use for explore. Because I think we showed like three or four explore teams. And the Phoenicia one technically doesn't need to be shown. But we might still show it. Just because it is relevant. It's a meta for something in the game currently. And has been since a patch from last year. But anyways. Uh, next thing next. Uh, let's go and farm some hero class XP for this thing. And we'll do that in uh, Zijin. Back to the goblins. Not those goblins. These goblins. Or more so the team that we're up against. Not our actual team. Hello, Scotty! Welcome. What would you use with this team? Plus 12 magic? Uh, yes. Truffle team and that other loop team we'd use plus 12 magic for. Both of them will be plus 12 magic. Actually, the one we just used could be 20% with plus 8 magic, actually. However, the Mirage Queen version of um, Truffle, you definitely run 12 magic of. And the non uh, the non Mirage Queen version, you can run twenty percent magic or twenty percent mana start into eight magic. Generally, if you're not doing half mana start, you run twenty percent. That's almost applicable to every team in the game, with very few exceptions. Hello, Juan. Welcome, or Juan. Yeah, definitely want to get this class at least to 80 today. Could probably push it closer to 82 or so. Slowly but surely, we shall get it up. I almost killed it with skulls. Nice. If anyone still has any other questions or anything you want me to go over, do let me know. And of course, next weekend, we're going to be grinding like crazy for the Vault event. Need to catch up for the two months I haven't been around for it. Two of the last three uh, Volt events I've not been around for. Can I see your question about the metal? Uh, you have seven Spirit Anu medals. Uh, what legend should you upgrade with Yagwe? After Yagwe? Uh, if you're running Yagwe Queen Titania, do Queen Titania. Queen Titania arguably gains the biggest benefit of any legend from being maxed. The main reason for doing Yagwe is Yagwe is used more often than Queen Titania more, of, uh, more often than not. However, based on purely numbers for offensiveness, um, Queen Titania theoretically gains the most offensive capability from being fully meddled. Because she gains about 9 damage per um, per being max. 6 is actually accumulated. However, that 6 is more like 9 due to Fairy Fire. Giving her one of the most offensive benefits. Because her gaining 9 damage is like gaining um, 36 damage. Because she does 9 per enemy. Potentially. Which is a lot of damage for benefit. Not even Rowene with the best armor would have gotten it. Because I believe the highest armor you can gain from one of them is 14. Which would have been 28 Rowene damage. However, Queen Titania can theoretically gain 36 damage potential out of being fully maxed. Wait, did I say 36? I mean, um... Yeah, 36 is right. Because 9, 9, 9, 9. Um, 9 times 4. That's 36. Yeah, I was right. Never mind. It's base value is 24, but it can get up to 36 value.
Uh, let's see. Hiking Iron Gut, so daily delves, etc. Seijin has Hiking Iron Gut, so daily delves, etc. What do you mean for that? I am not sure. Uh, did you know that Double Cedric Explorer 12 team, you joined the stream late? Did I show the Double Cedric Explorer 12 team? Can it actually do Explore 12? I don't think I've ever actually tested it on Explore 12. What would the composition be then? Key, Leprechaun, Double Cedric? I'm not sure if you'd bother running greed in that. Actually, I guess you could go greed. I don't know. Uh, we give it a shot. Let's go to Urskea. Go to Explore. Let's find a random team that we don't need. Um, well, actually, we theoretically don't need that. But, um... Let's see... Oh, you run it with... Oh, yeah, Egg Thief makes sense, too. A little bit of a slower gold start, though. But you can make up for it with... Um, with... Um, gold off a hero. By setting it to something like Thief or something similar. Now I'll set it to Thief, because why not? Oh, gee, we could run the Cedrix up front. Just have them as tank. Okay, that should be fine. Uh, let's change our banner. And then we go, um, actually, what do we need for this? A plus two red, plus one brown. What banner was that again? There it is. Okay, let's go with that. I used to run two times Cedric Key a while back, like around the time when Key actually came out. However, I don't think I've really bothered with it much on Explore 12. Does it actually have the damage I'll put to one-shot it? I don't think it does. I feel like it's going to be short. I also feel like it's going to win slower than... Um, than... Uh, what's it called? Than 30 seconds. Though you would get a lot of gold while doing it as well. On top of what you'd normally have. Oh, that's bad. It's got double silence. Probably a bad location for this. Oh, come on, that's not even enough to kill then. I don't know, that seems a little slow. But we do get a lot of gold at the end of it, though. It seems like it's taking about a minute for the battle. Still see me. This one might go quicker. Still seems slightly slower, though. I should be spamming key a bit more often, though. Not this early, but uh, soon. I come on, it's still not kill. Yeah, am I missing something here? It doesn't seem like it's working that well. Do I not have gold per turn set? I should. Uh, oh no, I don't have gold per turn. That's the whole reason for setting this hero class, and I don't even have it on. But yeah, you should be using gold per turn with it. That's why I switched to Thief. I assumed I already had it set. Apparently not. But yeah, it took a minute. A little over a minute. It's about twice as slow as what we normally use. Uh, 
Uh, what do I have instead? Why on earth do I have her as a summon set right now? Hunt, missile, gold, bandit should be disabled for something else. I don't know, I guess it doesn't get in the way of anything. I guess we can keep Bandit. Stealthy, dodge, and 7% kill on every kill. There you go. Let's give it a shot again. Switch to knife throwing. Two damage is not going to make much of a difference. <laughs> but I guess we could do that for two damage. Uh, let's see. Every little bit counts. I don't know, this does seem too slow. Personally. Okay, taking that skull for the thing. I didn't double check to see how long that battle took. I still feel like they're taking too long though. Yeah, two magic does add up. That could be the difference between killing and not killing, you never know. You never know. It's always worth to have it just in case. I just don't plan on using this for long, I'm mostly just testing it, which is why I'm not bothering to switch it though. Oh, of course it would silence. It has every random stats effect and negative stats effect in the game. And just chooses the one that's actually beneficial. But no, I don't think it's worth using this ever. Unless you have no other option. Seems relatively cheap though. Double Cedric's the hardest thing to get on it. Probably like a minute and a half right now. Yep, a minute and uh, 10 seconds. At least we're getting a lot of gold. <laughs> Look at that. For a single battle, we're almost got straight sevens. But it's not worth it for how much longer it takes. Because even though we almost got straight sevens right there, after a little over a minute, if we really wanted to, we could just do this and get uh, like 5,000 within, um, within half that time. So if we use this. Get our splody splodies. Mountain. Scorpius. Three mana. Come on. Uh, get our other thing. Somehow not full mana. And dead in um, 30 seconds. Would have been 30 seconds if I would have went for cast rather than checking time. Yeah, it's about double the speed of key. And, you're, and you overall get more gold from this method. Because even though the gold, the key team gave about straight sevens, this one's going to get less gold per battle. However, we win about two battles in the time that it takes to get one. So even if it was only 4,000, we'd be getting more gold. Which I believe we're getting over 4,000. We get, um... Oh, no, it's actually 3,074. Sometimes it can go as high as 4,000, though. Actually, I'm not sure what factor actually changes that. But, um... It comes out to about the same amount of gold. Let me double check. I could have sworn that you'd normally get battles that go up to closer to 4,000. With this. I guess it also depends how many times you cast Leprechaun. Because you can still get some gold through it that way, too. Regardless, this is definitely double the speed. There is a possibility it's slightly less better for gold. So that's about a 28 second. And we get, um... Yeah, why does it get more gold sometimes? I guess Leprechaun? Yeah, that's easily about, um... 
a little over 6,000 gold per hour. I mean, per minute. And that one was 3,000 to 20. So it seems to be about 6,500 then per minute. But you get two whole wins rather than one. And while that other method might theoretically give slightly better gold, you're getting half the tokens. And half the XP and half whatever else you might be needing from it. Half the trophies. But yeah, I guess you could go key team if you just really, really wanted to focus gold. Like, if you use it a lot and get really used to it, and do it in a really optimal kingdom, you could probably get it down to a consistent one minute. I feel like most of the battles are taking slightly longer than a minute with it, but I feel like you could get it down to a consistent one minute with key. And if you can consistently win once per minute with key to get max capacity of gold, it could be considered worth it. Because what, that'd be um, about 7,000 gold per minute. And that time 60 is what? How much gold is that? That's 420 gold per hour. Or sorry, 420,000 gold uh, per hour, approximately. Give or take like 20 to 30,000. Oh no. The bane of this team's existence. The thing that has immune. This is like the biggest thing that can slow it down. Doesn't slow it down too much, but it still slows it down. You better not escape. Oh. Well, he didn't slow us down, but he took our precious resources. Rip. <laughs> oh, well, it's only, um, it's only ingots. I don't need any ingot other than epic ingots. And I guess theoretically ultra rare, just because ultra rare converts to epic real easily. Speaking of that, I should probably go upgrade all my, uh, token, or my, all my, um, what are they called? All of my, um... I just said what they were called. Ingots. Because I don't think we have for a little while. Probably have a lot of them just sitting there. Yeah, you know he ran away with 12 epic ingots. Because they always run away with the best loot. This is fact. If they run away, that means they had the most valuable loot you could think of. <laughs> uh, let's see. What did we grab? Uh, let's go get, um... What was I looking for? I came here for a really specific reason. And now I already forgot what it was. <laughs> Let's see, we just lost... Oh yeah, duh. I came here... No wonder why I never upgrade these things. Keep forgetting to. Oh, speaking of forgetting to upgrade things. Uh, let me go get two Deeds of Magic. Which came in from this Monday. And other than that, let's go grab um, our upgrades. So let's go upgrade... Not those. Those I'm collecting, because why not? Let me go upgrade my uh, ultra rares into, or my rares into ultra rares. And then my ultra rares into epics. There we go. And we got 35 epic ingots from that. And with that being said, let's see how many weapons we can actually go upgrade. Because I think we can still get some now. So let's go search this by upgradable. Where's upgradable? Okay, so Cat's Paul. Why did I never upgrade this? What was this? Uh, create a green mix of green and red. Oh, this came out that one week I was in the way, wasn't it? And I just forgot to upgrade it. Seems like it. It's not relevant, right? No. There wasn't any reason I didn't upgrade it other than just forgetting. So let's go do that. Okay, grab all that. So another one down. Uh, Doom weapons we ignore. Um, I never bothered upgrading this useless weapon. Uh, Frostfire Jewel. I never bothered upgrading this useless weapon. Forgot that was even a thing. I forgot to upgrade this one from last week. Gosh, I forgot a lot of these. Oh, that's Bless and Barrier. That's a little bit better than I thought, actually. That's not too bad of a combo. That I'm deliberately not keeping upgraded. Primal Axe, we could probably just finally go and upgrade, though. I think it becomes... It has something that makes it worse. 
Yeah, destroy three green. However, that can also be beneficial. So we'll just max out Primal Axe. Then we just have the billion epic weapons. Oh, I never upgrade Wild Hunter either. Oh, it Hunter's marks all enemies too. Nice. I didn't even realize that was a thing on it. Still not worth it though. Still not worth it. That's kind of funny. Double it Hunter's marks them twice with how it is. Too bad neither of them trigger before its ability. Look at that. I deliberately don't upgrade that. I deliberately don't upgrade. This we can go probably go upgrade. Uh, yeah, so another one of those mixed colored ones. Useless closet summon though on it, but it will. And now we just have to worry about epic weapons. Let's go do a full head count of how many epic weapons we need to go upgrade. So it is seven. Uh, ten. Uh, fourteen. Seventeen. Twenty. Twenty-four. Twenty-eight. 29. We have 29 epic weapons to go and upgrade. They cost um, 36 each. What's 36 divided by uh, 577? How many did I say it need total? 39? Pretty sure I just counted 39. But what is um, that divided by 36? Divided by 36. Comes out to 16. 39 minus 16. Well, why did I put that in calculator? That's pretty obvious. 23. Okay, so we have about 23 more that we still need to uh, accumulate. And by 29 more, I mean 29 more sets of 36 until we can go upgrade every epic weapon in the game. So we still got a ways to go. Unfortunately. Now we're getting there. Let's we'll start upgrading some random ones. You get an upgrade. You get an upgrade. Every useless weapon gets an upgrade. I do want to avoid upgrading Eternal Flame, though. For whatever reason, they give it a yellow spawn rather than a red spawn. And Eternal Flame, while a relatively useless weapon in the current meta, actually gets nerfed if you upgrade it, which is weird. Same as, I believe, Deep Stone, even though you would never actually use Deep Stone. Because I believe it gets an explosion that ruins... Um... Oh, no, never mind. It used to have explosion. They got rid of it. For give all brown allies two mana. Like, I could upgrade another 9 if I wanted to. Deliberately skip Eternal Flame. Did this thing gain anything good? Uh, not really. Upgrade anyways. But yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, anyways, um, I don't want to upgrade too many more. In case we actually do need the upgrades eventually. But yeah, we're getting there. We almost have every weapon in the game maxed. Other than Doom weapons, which are, like, so annoying to max in the current state of the game. But yeah. Uh, let's see. What's the full list? Or how many does that leave now? Not counting Doom weapons. That now leaves us with, um... 9, 12, 16, 20, 20. We still have 20 weapons we have not maxed, and we have enough to do a few more. Sweet. I could probably get it all the way maxed if I would to go and go get all these other things done. Actually, probably not. Let's see, how many could we do if we go and uh, convert out every single one of these that we've been accumulating forever? If I do this, that converts to only 12 epic ingots, right? Because it converts to 1,255 of those, which converts to 125 ultra rares, which converts to 12 and a half epics. So that is definitely not worth upgrading. Because that many commons is only worth um, about 12 and a half epics, which is a single 12 drop of epics from one of those gnomes, if we get lucky enough. We're still almost there. Very, very close. I think we need about 500 then. We need about 500 more epics. You've maxed all the weapons. Nice. Yeah, I haven't been in any rush to do it. I still need more epics. And the dooms are really, really annoying to get. Because you have to spend gems to go get them maxed. Which can become very costly. 
Like, very, very costly. Did he actually do all the doomed weapons? I assume not, because it is extremely expensive to max every doom weapon. I'm pretty sure some amount of people are doing it. However, I would highly advise not doing that. Because you have to spend a couple thousand uh, gems every single doom event to max out every doom weapon constantly. Which I'm pretty sure most people don't do. But if you do, your guild's going to get leaderboard pretty easily. Yeah, everything but dooms. Yeah, I assume so. I'm pretty sure almost no one in the entire game has every doom weapon maxed. There's probably like some amount of people that did. But it's very costly to do so for almost no benefit. Yeah, I'm saving all my extra dooms. The only thing I bother doing with my doom scrolls is upgrade all of the six doom related weapons that convert into doom scrolls. And then I'm saving every last scroll until a good one comes out. The problem is they keep releasing useless weapons. But yeah, the only good Doom weapons currently are the um, the ones that convert to Doom Skulls with full AoE damage. Every Doom weapon that aren't those six, one per color, are useless. And the rest you pretty much just keep hoarding your other scrolls until they eventually do something good for it. Yeah, I'm hoping something good comes out for it soon. Next rotation, I believe, starts in two months, I believe. Two or three months. Yeah, I believe it's two months. How many have we gotten from this current rotation of Doom Weapons? I believe we're on a third or fourth. Pretty sure. I need to go double check. And it's weird because this was the first time when they only did a single weapon in rotation. Because normally they alternate between like two different types. This time it just went for one. You just finished all of the classes to uh, level 100 as well. Congratulations. Very nice. It takes quite some time. I'm still a little over 100 hours away from it. Mostly because I keep not spending gems on it and not farming them as much as of lately. Speaking of that, how close are we on level on this class that we're using right now? 79. Surprised we still haven't at 80 yet. <laughs> how about we how about we hand out code at 80? Since that should be any moment now. We still haven't handed one out yet. Should be about 10 or less, I assume. But we kept doing so many other things that we might not have gotten that much level on it. You managed to do Hall of Guardians level 500 pure faction two days ago. Congratulations. Now only missing the next two factions on rotation. And you finished them all. Very, very nice. Yeah, I've still not been able to get it. I tried again last night. What team did you end up ultimately getting it done with? Because I, I attempted again last night. Wasn't able to get it. We've gotten the final battle multiple times with four troops. The biggest issue is that gargoyle. At the end.
Hey, drum roll, please. Uh, let's see, we'll throw that down. Well, getting to the final room is easy enough. The biggest issue is just getting final room done. The biggest issue is denying out gargoyle mana. You use Silent Sentinel, Double Gargoyle, and a Sentry. That can make sense. I always put the Sentry in second slot on that team. Mostly because you could use the plus one brown to feed it. But I guess you could use the plus one yellow once Sentinel is dead to also feed it. Assuming it dies. The most ideal situation you can get out of final battle is killing at first slot so you can silence the second slot. But the other method is just to rush it down with enough damage that Gargoyle never gets to cast. Why do I use Dancing Daggers in this setup? No particular reason. Uh, just because it's a quick cast that's not, uh, that's feeding a color that we don't have. There really isn't any reason to use it, other than the fact that it doesn't block Rowan mana. You can use pretty much any yellow weapon in the game there. Or really any weapon in the game, as long as it doesn't block Rowan mana. Or Leprechaun mana. <laughs> Particularly Rowan mana, though. But no, there's no real particular reason. It's just a nice little yellow weapon for AoE. That doesn't block it at all. You'll see me cast it like once every 200 battles. It's very rare that you would need it. Thank you. Yeah, big sneeze. Yeah, I've gotten close before. I have yet to actually kill the gargoyle though. At that point, it would be a pretty easy win. Actually, did I kill the Gargoyle once? I might have. But I think we got trolled by a skull after. Because the, their entire team was still alive and only had one troop left. I forget if we actually got the kill or not. But regardless, I've never been able to get past um, like the last two or three on their team. It's normally the Gargoyle's fault. Because the Gargoyle is almost always going to get a cast on you. And unless you get super lucky and it hits your um, the thing with 50% spell reduction, you're going to die. If it hits anything other than that. The 50% spell reduction troops the only thing you could hit where it won't one shot. Yeah, we'll get it eventually. And worst comes to worst, I'll just spend like a little over 2,000 gems on it. Which ideally we'll avoid doing that, but if we have to, we'll do it. finally get it done it'll be worth it because i'm currently only missing three factions one i'll have done next tuesday uh maybe we'll do it for hall of guardians and then a few weeks after hall of guardians we'll have sea of sorrows and then sea of sorrows will be our final one if we do it that way but between now and uh, several weeks from now we'll still keep attempting uh hall of guardians here and there and hopefully we'll just get the luck we need to win What level am I playing? I'm currently doing Explore 3 for quick DXP to level up our uh, Arc Mage's Carrier class. I want to get to 100 before next Guild War. we still got some time before next Guild War. We've got, like, what, uh, 16 days? But got to keep working it up because 16 days will come here out of nowhere. 
But then again, we're going to get a lot of levels for it next weekend. So much so, we're probably getting to 100 next weekend. Because we're going to have Noom event. Or Vault event, I should say. And during Vault event, we'll probably be running this team to power level this um, this team. And if we somehow get it to, or this hero class, I mean. And if we end up getting this hero class to level 100, we'll just do it for another hero class. Because we still have like 7 or 8 that we need to go max. All of which except Diabolus is above level 70. And the only reason Diabolus isn't is because, just for fun, I left it at level 66. You thought it would be funny. So theoretically, I'm level 70 plus on every hero class. Also, speaking of level, there is level 80. Let's go handout code. Code time. There you go. Uh, let's see. Where was I? Cody code code. Uh, this should be the right code, right? Oh, I need to go ask for more codes. I am lower than I thought I was. I have enough till like midway, wait, midway next week. I said that a couple days ago, but now it looks even lower now that a few codes are gone. But yeah, we're going to run out very soon and make sure I remind Salty tomorrow. And then again on Monday for because she'll forget. <laughs> uh, let's see. Refresh that. Grab paste. Copy, copy. And I don't bother asking her on Saturdays because she's generally out of office. And there you guys go. There's a redeem code used on gemsaward.com with the game code section. Your invite code can be found in your settings menu, whatever your game says in bottom left in the settings right over there. Uh, redeem code's right over in chat. Let's copy paste the random numbers and letters there in chat. And it gives the same reward as always. Two treasure maps, one gem key, 200 souls, and 2,500 gold. Enjoy, everyone. It's only usable on PC mobile version. There you guys go. Enjoy. And on top of that gem key, you can get all the gems that we have available today. Okay, so next order of business. Back to power leveling. Because that's the only other thing we really have to go do. Because I'll probably run, um... Uh, we'll probably run our Hall of Guardian attempts tonight, I think. So we'll probably farm this for a little bit longer. And then just call it a stream for now and go grab dinner. Anyone else getting does not exist. Make sure you didn't accidentally add another space. Click backspace on it. Sometimes it adds another space for no reason. If you're just getting a uh, general error message, uh, just click refresh. Uh, since we just handed out a code, sometimes the page gets so much traffic that it has a weird error sometimes. But more often than not, it's because yeah, if, if it says it, um, the code itself doesn't work, and it doesn't say that it's been used up, it's probably just an extra space that was added. Even if you copied it exactly, it'll sometimes add a random space for no reason. Not sure why. No problem for the code, everyone. You blame Zidicus. What did Zidicus do? Nothing wrong at all. I <laughs> blame the cats. Kill it right out. Hey, what's the next video I need to cover after this uh, video? After we covered the top 10 teams of last year, uh, which are still all relevant right now, by the way, even though it's based on new stuff that came out last year. But um, 
after that, I think we'll do a video on, um, yeah, 100 gems. On, um, everything that has gem value in the game. And since we're doing that video, I might do a similar video to it uh, around the same time. Not during the same video, otherwise the video is going to be like an hour long. But uh, also cover a separate video sometime near that time. Where we go over every way to accumulate gems in the game. I've gone over that video before, but more methods have been uh, added or changed. Because the last time I went over it, I believe the old event objectives used to exist. Where you need to go get those green gems. Which obviously are not a thing that's been replaced with Adventure Board. The only problem is that the video will always that will have to be replaced as soon as they revamp uh, uh, Treasure Hunt later this year. Possibly even when they revamp Arena next year. Or this year, I mean. Because we don't know if they're actually going to add gems to Arena. Currently, um, Arena has pretty bad gem value. Which is one of the reasons why it's not really done. It probably has the lowest premium currency value of almost any game's Arena I have ever seen. Generally, Arena in any game is the best location for farming stuff like that, or at least a pretty good location. However, uh, Arena has almost zero gem value in Gems of War. The only thing you get of gem value is how many glory keys? Three glory keys? Which has a gem value of about um, three. <laughs> the glory keys are worth about one gem each. So, um, yeah, that's really low. You can get more than three gems in a treasure hunt. Because souls have no value. No gem value. And that's a good majority of the loot currently from Arena. That's almost all the loot from Arena. And trophies. But trophies have now become so much easier to farm that it's not relevant now. Because it's no longer the quickest method in the game. Nor is it the best soul method. It's mostly just used as a soul method prior to uh, owning actual soul methods. Like Dragon Soul, Fair Shra, stuff like that. So it's only really used in early game and mid game for that reason. You could you do a video on new guardians and how they combo with the um, with the um, old guardians? Do they even combo with the old guardians? I've um, done a video going over the new guardians to some capacity. However, I've never really mentioned them in combination with the old guardians. I feel like that generally wouldn't work. Because you're using two troops that use the same color. Unless you're trying to build that into a Vespera. And doing it that way. For yellow, purple, or uh, blue. But other than that, I don't feel like you'd bother using two of them together. Because that's two troops on your team that both only use one color. Which in any context other than Vespera is generally not a good idea. Unless it's like Mountain Crusher with something. But that's a bit different because Mountain Crusher is just so insanely good at mana accumulating. Plus it beats two mana to all browns. Which would include the thing that it copies the mana on. It almost does feel like a gnome event, doesn't it? We are getting quite a few gnomes. It might seem like that too because of Battle Crashers. Battle Crashers are making it seem like they're coming more often. But Battle Crashers aren't actually gnomes. They're completely different. So I wonder why I keep misclicking. The way I have the mic right now is actually blocking the cast button. So I've been misclicking it, uh, like potential. Uh, I'm missing it much higher than normal because of uh, the mic blocking it. Let me move it. <laughs> there we go. Mic should still sound about the same. And now I can actually see the cast button. If anyone still has any other questions, do let me know. Otherwise, I think we'll go until we get another level on class and then uh, call it a stream from there. 777 gems. Gem farming ideas? 
For what? Farming 777 gems? You could do treasure hunt for um, 12 hours. If you do treasure hunt for every hour, or from every single moment, until now, until tomorrow, you will have 777 gems. Obviously, most people wouldn't want to do that method. <laughs> That's like uh, probably the least favorable method of gaining gems. I don't know. I get most of my gems off of tribute these days. Tribute and just the passive ones you get for dailies. Like uh, Adventure Board and um, uh, Guild. <laughs> and zero chance of staying awake. Well, that's a good way to go to bed, then. Every night before bed, go try doing 100 maps. And see if you fall asleep by the fifth. Uh, let's see. Go for that. You mentioned they are planning to revamp treasure maps. Yes. They've been talking about it for, this for some time. However, it's almost guaranteed happening this year. Later this year, though. It's probably after 5.0 patch or with 5.0 patch. 5.0 patch is coming this summer. It's either going to come with that patch or be a, two, a patch or two after the patch. They haven't really confirmed. But we know that 5.0 is likely going to be uh, a summer patch. Probably in about uh, May. I feel like it's going to be early summer. Don't know exact news on that yet. A moister than an oyster. <laughs> nice play on words. <laughs> it's like counting backward from 10 while they're uh, doing amnesia. Actually, when I had laughing gas used on me before, when I got my wisdom teeth uh, pulled, I, was, I actually did end up laughing hysterically from it. It, like, knocked me out, and then it eventually, like, not knocked me out before they actually, like, started doing the thing. And then I, like, started laughing hysterically. And then eventually I went all the way out. But then, like, during the procedure as well, I, like, kind of came conscious again. And they said it was really hilarious because I was, like, so loopy and everything. It's quite a bit of fun. I don't remember much when I actually woke up that time. But I do remember the first time when I ended up waking up from it. I was just laughing the whole time. It doesn't work make everyone do that, but it definitely made me do it. And it was pretty funny. Which is why it's actually called that. Most people don't have that reaction to it, though. Actually, it feels really comfortable not being able to feel anything. Usually, what are you farming on level 3 Explorers? Um, I'm personally farming Class XP. However, you gain quite a few things while farming this that's not just Class XP. You gain the highest trait stone rate in the entire game. You gain the highest... Um, Hero XP rate in the entire game. Not class XP, they're two different things. But it also does the highest class XP in the game. And it also does um, uh, some tokens. Not the best rate of tokens, not even close. But it does do some amount of tokens and some amount of gold. It's like 100 to 150,000 gold per hour. Also being some small amount of tokens. That are epic rarity and below. But it's mostly done for the class XP, the hero XP, and the... Um, and the to and the uh, um, and the trade stones. The trade stones I don't need, don't need, but the class XP and the hero XP I do. Oh, that didn't do full mana, really? Definitely thought it would. Probably because it didn't surge. If it would have surged, it would have. But without surge, it's only five mana, not six. And then we get surge and win. I should have done the Leprechaun there. I was risking that on surge. However, we do have like a 66% surge chance or something. 
So we can kind of risk it because there's like double the chance that we'd get surge compared to not getting surge. Take the extra turn, but I'm just going to go for that. Let him do his thing and dead. Could also take and red the skull, but obviously we already won. The second we get the ability up, we won already. Oh, yeah, that's something that was happening next week, too. I'll probably stream that some. Uh, Biolith is coming out for Smash very soon. I believe it was the 28th, which is next Tuesday. I wonder if it's coming out Monday nights or Tuesday nights. Hmm. That's bad, because if it's Tuesday night, that's, um, that's when we're doing factions. <laughs> and by doing factions, I mean literally all night. So I guess we'll do that on Wednesday then. Unless it's coming out the day of Tuesday. Because next Tuesday we will be doing 500 pure faction for uh, Dark Pits. We will be up till past midnight, probably. It's for the same kingdom that this guy's from. The rats. What's his name? Radagar? Ratatouille? <laughs> I just forget his name. His name is... Yeah, Radagar. That's what I thought. Use Arc uh, Magic Magus this week for um, uh, with triple uh, Narita and the Reflection of Good, just for fun. Wait, what's Narita again? Or Narita? I actually completely forget what troop that is off the top of my head. What is that troop? Oh, I did it with. Uh, uh wait, why Narita? Now I'm even more confused. Oh. Because, um, duh. Because if you have multiple, you can just do it for the tower. I see now. That makes sense. Never mind. So I was going to say, outside of the event, it would make no sense. But if you bought the pack so you actually have extra copy, you can do that within the event. That would work. For invasions, you can get away with that. For raids, you can't. For invasions, you can. And the reason for that is because they do multiplier against everything. Whereas in raids, they only do multiplier against last slot. A rat ended a couple of your PvP runs today with unlucky death marks. Yeah, he got a really unlucky silence on us earlier when we were messing with something. I forget exactly what it was, but he got a silence at the exact perfect time. He can do any random negative status effect in the game twice. So he can be a bit annoying if he gets lucky on what they actually do. How much more EXP do we need towards this guy? Uh, we're almost there. We need, uh, what is that? 29. 29 to go. Which takes about 10 minutes. So if anyone still has any questions, let me know. We'll get around to the rest of them. How does my Rowane have 92 armor? Uh, it's from a very large combination of extra stats. Here's the full breakdown. It's mostly like from level 10 kingdoms and such. But as far as the full breakdown, we're getting 29 from Kingdom Upgrades. This includes uh, level 10 All Kingdoms, 5 Star All Kingdoms, and 10 Star All Kingdoms. So if you're missing any of those, that's what that's from. Uh, for the next one, we have it from Guild Bonus. If your guild is not doing epic tasks, uh, I'm getting an additional 8 from that. 
Also, if you're not doing the normal tasks, I'm getting another eight from that for a total of 16. But likely you're missed, you're doing normal tasks, but possibly not epic tasks. From having high renown, we've gotten four armor. Um, and then I have my metal set to have plus 24 armor, which might also be a big part of the difference if you don't have the three uh, metal set. Because that counts for 24. But most of the combination of what you're missing is some for kingdoms. Uh, possibly not having this done for your guild yet. And even if your guild does do it, it might not have gotten it done yet this week. And um, you might have forgotten to set medals. Any combination of those factors. Oh yeah, that's something else I should go redo. Uh, a video on why troops have different stats. Because I get asked that probably more than any other question. Why do, um, why do other people's troops look weaker than mine? And it's because of where all the stats that you get from random things within the game. And most newer players aren't aware of what most of them are. And even if you're not a newer player, you can easily forget about a couple of them just because there's so many. Oh, you forgot the metal. Oh, yeah, that would make sense then. And the other two is probably just from Faction Renown then or something. Uh, in the Agwe team, uh, Sooner would be a good replacement for Queen Titania. Um, yes. I actually ran that on my Nintendo Switch account. However, Suna is weaker than Queen Titania. But yes, I did run that on my Nintendo Switch account, actually. Because for whatever reason, it was able to get Suna prior to ever getting Queen Titania. And I believe to this day, it still doesn't own, um, Queen Titania, oddly enough. But, um, yes, you can use a Suna as a Queen Titania replacement. However, she's weaker than Queen Titania, even though she's a mythic. So once you get Queen Titania, you should replace your Suna with Queen Titania. But it is a f okay replacement for prior to owning Queen Titania. It's very rare that that would happen, but it does happen. <laughs> and my other account actually had that happen to it. It's definitely possible. Hello, Michael. Welcome. It's not likely to happen, but it happens. It's kind of funny that um, there are quite a few instances where um, legends are actually better than mythics. Where you might actually get the mythic and not have the legend and just you have to use the mythic until you get the legends. What's a good sub for dancing daggers? Literally any weapon in the entire game that doesn't block for Wayne. So something like Mountain Crusher or Skea Shield... Literally any yellow weapon in the entire game that only uses yellow. Uh, or at least any colors that don't block Rowan. And anything along those lines. Like quite literally anything that doesn't block Rowan is correct. I don't think I've cast this a single time this entire stream. It's just there to be there. Because more often than not you win as soon as you cast Leprechaun into Rowan every single time. The way I have the weapon set up currently is just in case they somehow revive. Which generally you would do kingdoms that don't have any chance to revive. But uh, in case they were to revive or some kind of other weird thing had to happen. We could clean up with that weapon. And that's the reason I'm running it that way. However if you make sure to choose a kingdom that doesn't have any of those mechanics. You can easily win every single time in one shot. And if you're not one shotting um, based on damage. You could just do it to explore 2 rather than explore 3. I just do it to explore 3 because I have enough stats to one shot it. But Explore 2 is pretty much the same loot. It'd be the same class XP and everything. You just get slightly less gold and slightly lower rarity trait stones. But you're already getting such low rarity trait stones that that doesn't make much of a difference. You'd also get theoretically slightly less shards. But you're already getting so few that, again, it doesn't make much of a difference. Yeah, Mountain Crusher works. It's good for a mana accumulation method in case you need to recast. Leprechaun plus Mountain Crusher is an insanely good combo. Hello, Haley. Welcome.
Yeah, Stonehammer um, is generally a pretty bad mythic. However, if you do give it half mana start off of um, off of a high forge and build an entire dwarf team, he's kind of okay in that context. However, I wouldn't really advise using him. But yeah, if you're going to build a team, it would be something along the lines of uh, Stonehammer, hero set to dwarven hero class, using, um, I feel like Mirror of Good these days, followed by Apothecary and High Forge. And just run it like that. High Forge gives your entire team half mana start. Um, the Mirror you'll keep spamming onto your first slot. And then Apothecary you use for cleanse and to feed Brown to your first and last slot. That actually sounds like it would work. He's not particularly good, though. But if he's your only mythic, I guess you could kind of make him work. He's rather underwhelming, though. He's one of the worst mythics in the game. However, uh, oddly enough, despite being that, he does have the high score reduction in the entire game at 80%. The only problem is there's a lot of stuff that bypasses that. Doom Skulls bypass that pretty much. Uh, if he gets cursed and stunned, he doesn't have any score reduction. And uh, Enrage hits through the entirety of his score reduction. So there's multiple mechanics that can hit through. Not to mention he has no spell reduction. So just using normal spells would kill him as if he has no reduction at all. Because he doesn't have any reduction at all for that. At least that one guard troop has both skull reduction and spell reduction. So at least it gets to counter the other one. Or, you know, it gets to counter both in case they do any either damage. But well, generally, both of them are never really used. Kind of curious how that would work, though. Let me go make that team real quick, just for fun. Uh, but yeah, this would be the team. Like, can I get something I don't want to replace? Seriously. Uh, here, this one is probably fine. There we go. Uh, let's see. What do I want here? I want, um, stone hammer. I probably shouldn't have typed that. Uh, let's see. There we go. Stone hammer. And apothecary. A Mirror of Good. I've never actually tried this with Mirror of Good. Because like Mirror is relatively recent. Um, it's Reflection of Good. I always call it Mirror of Good. It's Reflection. And uh, Stonehammer. Also trying to type with one hand is bad. Not Stonehammer. I mean uh, High Forge. Wait, what color are you missing? Anything? Uh, no, that actually covers everything. So let's go... I'm almost leaning to a plus two purple, plus one green. Does that exist? I believe so. I'm pretty sure that's a minus blue. Which the problem is it's minus blue. <laughs> if that's minus blue, I actually can't go that banner. Oh, it's minus red. That's fine, kind of. Um, I'll make it work. Oh, and class would have to be dwarf. Uh, where to go? Ruin priests. There it is. Wait, I already had a set. Oh, I don't have a team selected. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Uh, let's see, where to go? That's not it. Where's the team I was just putting in? Where to go? Seriously, where did I just put that team? Oh, it was under. Why did it do that? There it is. Uh, run priest. Equip. Do we need to change anything on it? Don't think so. Looks like it's fine. Banish. Rock. Some extra skull damage. Barrier. That seems good enough. Uh, hammer. And stun. Oh, wait. What is this thing considered? I believe it's artifact. Yes, unfortunately it's artifact. Okay, let's just roll with this and see what happens. 
But this, I believe, is the strongest team you could really get out of it. Or one of the stronger ones. There's not too many things you could really use with this thing. I'll roll with this. Let's see what happens. Hey, you can use this team. I'll go copy-paste it to chat right now as well. As soon as we finish this battle. Uh, I can't do it right right now. Let's see. We'll take that over for now. Grab Mirror of Good to full. And throw it down to our first slot. Okay. Uh, we throw a high forge every single time we can. Uh, do I take that skull? I believe the answer is yes. High forge poke. Gotta get apothecary in there. Get another high forge. Go for stone hammer. Or just stun the entire team. Give us a bunch of manas. High forge again. Reflection again. Uh, Apothecary again to also cleanse in case we need it for whatever. Get that down. Cast his ability. Um, at least we get him back to full mana. Please don't miss. Actually, I might just take guarantee right here. Biggest issue is he tends to block mana a lot. Okay, uh, let's high forge him, reflection again. To get enraged mostly. Hot the carry off his cascade, hopefully. Get a skull. Somehow not dead, and then dead. Oh no, it's it's okay. I wouldn't really advise using it. But if you're gonna bother build something out of it, that's not too bad. If nothing else, it gives him bless and everything so he can have some more immunity so he doesn't lose stuff. It also helps make sure he doesn't get stunned or uh uh, curse stun, so he doesn't lose his traits. Because he normally is immune to stun, but he doesn't have immune to curse. But Bless gives him immune to curse. At least for one instance. Okay, let me go copy this team to chat. If we're gonna bother using the uh, using stone hammer, that's probably one of the better options. The other better option is using it with um, uh, Courage, which boost ratio is based on his burning that he does. And since you get higher attack off it, you can utilize it and just keep doing it into skulls or doom skulls. But there's the team if you want to go use it. The burn within. Pretty much the burn within troop. Pretty much. I believe that's unique to only him too. I can't recall any other troop that actually has that dialogue. They really need to get more unique dialogue. There's quite a few funny ones. Anyways, let me go get this final level. I think we're like 20 battles away or something. And then we'll probably call it a stream for now. Because I want to go catch dinner. <laughs> catch dinner. We're going to go hunt for our meal. <laughs> actually, I'm not sure what I'm going to go do for dinner. I had a salad before we started. So that kind of held me over. Trying to get a bit healthier. Keyword on trying. <laughs> oh yeah, Slayer counts as dwarf too. I forgot about that. You're right. I keep forgetting that there's a second dwarf here class now. You don't just have to use Sprint Freeze. Almost winning without even doing anything. Just explode once and just all goes into place. Yeah, just don't turn into one of those health snobs, no. <laughs> Tassel will turn his channel into a health and fitness one, that would never happen.
Hey, there's a level. Nice. So we're at level 81 now. Still need another 19, but we'll get there. A vegan dragon is a starving one. <laughs> right, that reminds me, we never did play Ring Fit Adventure on the channel. That one actually has a bodybuilding dragon as the main antagonist, which is pretty funny. There's a few other antagonists, though, as well. But he's the main one. Iron Gut will uh, be back in Soul Forge about three to four months. Uh, yes, he was just recently, right? I believe we're on new rotation in two weeks, so he could be within a few weeks. Um, because I believe next week, we pretty much know what it's going to be. I forget what they are, but I believe we already know what it's going to be. If you inverse all the ones that we already had. And then the week after that, I believe we're on new cycle. It's either uh, two weeks from now or three weeks from now. We're on a brand new cycle. And once that happens, any mythic could occur. Which means Iron Gut could be in a few weeks from now if we get lucky. However, if we don't get lucky, it could be three months or so. But uh, yeah, I believe we're on new cycle in like two or three weeks. Very, very soon. I believe last week is the last cycle. Or the last week of this cycle. Until all of them come back into Soul Forge. And then it could be literally any of them. But anyways, guys. Any other questions? Otherwise, um... Uh, we'll be back to, uh, tonight in about uh, four and a half hours from now. Oh gosh, the stream went a little bit late then. Uh, well, because it started a little bit later. But yeah, we'll be back in four and a half hours. And uh, we'll be messing around with um, probably some more Hall of Guardian attempts. Um, maybe just one. I don't know. We'll see. I need to make sure I don't get a bad middle battle. So I might skip a few until we get a proper one. And other than that, we'll probably just be grinding a little bit more at the uh, Hero Glass and go from there. But anyways, guys, uh, don't forget to go do your adventure board. We have that really nice 100 gem one. Uh, from the uh, Lunar New Year this today. So definitely want to go grab that. We'll be doing that tonight. And uh, uh, all our normal stuff. So uh, that's actually going to make our gems pop up quite a bit. We're almost going to be back to 21,000. Though that's going to go down all the way back uh, tomorrow on Monday. Or not uh, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. Uh, not uh, Words. Uh, on Tuesday that's going to go back down. Because we're going to go for uh, Pure Faction 500. For, um, for Dark Pits. Which will have all the rats. That's kind of funny. I wonder if they planned that. Because Dark Pits came out perfectly. The Rat Kingdom as the first faction event we get during uh, Lunar New Year of the Year of the Rat. It's kind of funny. But uh, anyways, guys, I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much for stopping by. Leave a like if you enjoyed the stream. And we'll be back, as I mentioned, four and a half hours from now at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as we do every single night. And in our next stream after that will be tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as well. In which case, we'll go over all of the new uh, event stuff. But anyways, guys, catch you later. Thanks for watching. And uh, happy Lunar New Year's, everyone. Goodbye, everyone.